Jay Simmon here for Flag Family Media. I'm here with uh, Associate Head Coach Spencer Bland. Uh, Coach, thanks for joining us today this time. No problem. I apologize for saying <laughs> At least you admit your mistake. Yes, 100% on me. Um, so, I mean, obviously you had a chance to talk with James uh, pregame uh, heading into the weekend or heading into the, sat heading into the Saturday game, excuse me. Uh, but an interesting weekend because uh, these are two quality opponents, obviously, yep. in the NSIC. Uh, Bemidji State was a team you guys had to beat on a last-second buzzer beater at the tournament last year. And St. Cloud State came out really well in that second half. So you two grinded out victories. So... When you and the coaching staff looked at those games this week, and what were your biggest takeaways from those victories? You know, I think the biggest thing that we were, you know, focused on was that we found a way. You know, we, we were able to gut out two victories against very, two very good teams at home. Um, and to be completely honest, I don't think we played our best basketball. Now, it's a credit to that other team. They came prepared. They came ready. Um, you know, shots were a little bit tough to find for us at times. I think we kind of found our rhythm getting to the free throw line a couple more times than, than both of those opponents, um, limiting our turnovers. Um, so, again, there's some good areas. Obviously, as, as coaches, you want to, you know, win by X amount and go in and not have to worry about it and sweat it out. But um, the fact that we found a bunch of different ways to win here early on in the season, whether it's you know, winning by a, a margin of victory, whether it's going to overtime, whether it's coming from behind, whether it's holding on to a lead. I think we found a different bunch of ways here early, um, and I think it's a credit and, and testament to those guys for just figuring it out and finding a way, and I think with that comes veteran experience, um, and we're fortunate to have a lot of guys who have kind of been in those situations before. So when we look at the two games last week, kind of different situations. Yeah. Uh, close game against Bemidji. Uh, you tied at half. You go out and you win the second half, kind of similar to the Northern State game. Yeah. Saturday when we were there covering the game, uh, a little bit different you guys were up by six they got a late bucket to cut it to six but to me in that first half against uh, St. Cloud State it felt like you guys were for the most part in control weren't shooting a great percentage second half uh, St. Cloud State shot much better uh, than they did in the first half they basically won that second half and took those free throws so yep. uh, what was the difference in those two games and then the second kind of part of that as an add-on to the St. Cloud State game was that you guys shot really well from the free throw line which is something that has kind of eluded you guys a little bit early on in the season yeah I mean if we don't shoot that well at the free throw line I mean, that game can go a completely different direction. But, um, you know, I, you said in control in the first half. I, I, it looked a little sure. bit. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, for us, it just it, it didn't feel like we were totally there, and it felt like we were pressing for some buckets at times, and, and we forced them to make some mistakes early, um, which allowed us to get some easy buckets, I think. Um, but, again, they kind of cleaned those mistakes up. And come second half, I think the shots that we're normally accustomed to taking or, you know, the freedom within some of our motions and sets, um, I think they did a really good job of taking that stuff away. And so I think we did start to press a little bit. But I think ultimately our guards getting down Hill, um, being strong off of two feet, obviously getting fouled and going to the free mm -hmm. throw line and making their free throws. Um, I think all those are, are little things. And so if you limit your turnovers, you get to the free throw line. I don't care if you're shooting 55% or 39%, um, you got a chance to win. And all I right. think our guys figured out that, you know, even on the not great shooting nights, on, mm -hmm. on the nights where things might not be going our way, going getting the ball in the hoop, um, you know, we were fortunate to find a way to, to get it done at the end of the day. Uh, so this is the first time we've had a chance to kind of sit down and talk with you. Um, you've got three different uh, transfers in that are getting minutes. Obviously, you've got Jameer starting, you got Jakir coming off the bench, you got Jacob coming off the bench, too, which is a seven footer that is yeah. still, in a sense, working his way back. So, uh, what are your thoughts on those three guys and how well they've acclimated to the Dragon system? I, I can't say enough about those three guys and to the team as a whole. I mean, you lose seniors like Gavin Baumgartner, mm -hmm. Lorenzo McGee, Jaden Stanley Williams, Trevor Kaiser. Um, you lose a lot of experience, a lot of talent, a lot of guys who have, have been in the locker room um, and, and led in a locker room. Um, and so, it was a great chance for our returning guys, such as Dane Zimmer such as Jacob Benninga, Gabe Myron, um, you know, the emergence of Logan Kinsey as a young guy kind of stepping into a starting role. Um, so, again, we, we started to see all these guys in different roles. And, you know, us as a coaching staff, me and, and Tim sitting there talking to each other over the offseason, it's, man, how do we fill these mm -hmm. voids? Because um, everybody in the league knew it. We had, oh, yeah. we had to find a way to replace some of those guys in production. And so um, – we were very confident about Jameer, very confident about Jakir. We love that we got Jacob to, to come here and, and um, you know, essentially start his college playing career. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was at Colorado State for two years but didn't play in, in yeah. a game. And so, um, you know, we liked what we had. Now I, I think it's safe to say they've kind of exceeded our expectations here yes, early on. very much so. Um, kind of just getting the ball and, and, and rolling and, and playing. And so, again, there's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. But who those guys are as people, their work ethic, um, how they carry themselves on and off the court. It, it, it Seriously, for, for three guys to come in here, it's been a perfect mesh, and so I can't say enough about them. Now, when we talk about some of the guys, obviously, that are returning, so you, you look at the box score uh, last weekend on Saturday specifically. Obviously, up at the top again, Jameer, yep. uh, 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 Jacob Benega, um, and then, of course, you had Jakir right there as well. But two of the guys that James and I kind of debated a little bit about our player of the game, and we gave the player of the game, or I did anyway, to Logan Kinsey, and then, obviously, 
uh, the honorable mention that was right there was also Dane Zimmer. Okay. And I think the thing that impressed me most about those two guys is that it's always it's not always about going out there and filling up the stat sheet as far as points go. I mean, Dane had nearly a double double. Uh, Logan was guarding a lot of the best team, uh, the best perimeter player from the mm-hmm. other team. So, I mean, can you talk a little bit about those two guys specifically, kind of taking on their role and it defensively being just as much a part of their identity as it is to being able to score on the offensive end? Yeah, D- Dane is to touch on him first. He's one of those guys that you know you don't have to run a play for, you don't have to run a set for, and after 40 minutes you look at the stat sheet and he's got 14 and 12. Yeah. Like he just does it so quietly, but he always puts himself in the best position possible. He makes great reads from his teammates, um, off the ball, setting screens, um, you know, doing doing all the little things. And so Dane is one of those guys that you never have to worry about if he's ready to go. You never have to know, worry about if he's ready for the game plan. He's just, I mean. We know Dane's going to do his job, um, and that 100% is a luxury for us as a coaching staff and something that we'll miss, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, but um, the big fella's playing some really, really good basketball. And then a guy like Logan Kinsey, just, he has no fear. Yeah. Um, you know, he just he's willing to guard anybody. He's willing to do anything. Um, you know, he, he, he will at times struggle. He'll at times succeed. Um, but no matter which direction kind of the pendulum swinging, it doesn't affect him mentally. Yeah. Um, and so if he gets scored on, if he gets a huge stop, like again, both ends, opposite ends of the spectrum, um, he's just even. He's steady. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a huge testament to a, a sophomore player um, playing in this league and, and you know playing amongst the, the guys that, that we have on this roster. And he just kind of fits in seamlessly. And like you said, he's another guy that can have 14 and yeah. 10 one game and another game he might have two and seven and you just never know. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's how our roster is constructed. Um, you know, when you talked about the player of the game, I think two that could be in mention too were Owen Heckner and Eddie Absolutely, Benninga yeah. against Bemidji. Yes, the Minnesota State play um, were very impactful. I mean, they kept us rolling there for a little bit when we were struggling to find some offense mm-hmm. and so again you know when we have seven eight guys that are capable of putting up eight to 12 points a game um you know obviously jacob's yeah. very capable of mm-hmm. going off for 30 and jameer and um you know jakir and those guys um you know but when you have a lineup that everybody's a threat and you be able to insert guys like owen heckner and eddie benninga and jacob jennison and and um the logans the danes like I just think that we have so much firepower there that it's yeah. hard to kind of pick and choose one guy. Oh, it is, and they, the defense can't load up on that one guy. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, we could spend another 20 minutes or more just kind of breaking down some of these guys uh, on the roster. But uh, heading into this week, uh, another road trip coming up for you guys uh, tomorrow because we're recording this on Wednesday. Tomorrow you're going to Crookston, yep. take on uh, uh, the University of Minnesota Crookston, and then that's followed up by a Saturday trip up to Minot to take on a Minot State team that started the year very well. So what can you tell us about these two teams in these matchups? Man, Crookston starting on Thursday. Um, they have a very talented backcourt. They got two, a starting point guard, a, star, a starting two guard um, that are capable of scoring 20, 30 points in a game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then across that board, they, they have floor spacers. They have some athletic guys in the front court. Um, they really are a, a talented offensive team and a much improved team from last year. And so, um, you know, the message to the guys is obviously we get it. It doesn't matter records. You're seeing it all across college yeah. basketball at every le- mm-hmm. every uh, every level. Any team can beat any team. Yeah. Um, you know, and the fact that we've been finding ways to win, whether it's pretty, whether it's not pretty, um, you know, is a testament to our guys and, and their will to, to figure it out. But on the road in Crookston um, against a much improved squad, it should be it should be a fun one. And we're excited for for that one for sure. And then on Saturday, I might not the game uh, we'll be covering right on uh, AM 1100 92.3 FM, the flag. Uh, Minot State team that has started off really, really pretty well. I think they're like seven and two this year. Very talented, seven and two, and I think they're three and one within the NSIC. Mm-hmm. Um, that only loss coming to Bemidji in a really good game. And so, um, again, another team that's more than capable of beating anybody. They run really great action offensively. It's a lot of false kind of um, entry motions before they kind of get into their action, so they get those defenses moving around. And if you're a second late or if you um, aren't willing to, to get up and in on some of those switches, which is in handoffs. It's a little too late at times, too. And so, um, again, they got a point guard in Kahari Broadway that leads the show and is, is very, very talented. And then they put players around them that are, are, are very complimentary pieces. And again, going up to my not playing in that dome, um, it, it's a tough place to yeah. win. It's a tough place to win. We've had some we've had some good memories there. We've had some tough <laughs> memories there. And so, um, again, but our focus is, is one game at a time, Latano Thursday, and then we can can figure out how to get it done on Saturday and hopefully head into to Christmas break with a with a 12 and 0 record. Awesome. All right. Well, coach, I want to thank you for a yeah. moment of your time and stepping in for uh, Coach Berge today. Uh, and so uh, we'll be there, uh, obviously, with you guys on Saturday for the Minot State game. So we're looking forward to it. So best of luck uh, tomorrow and then obviously on Saturday. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you then, obviously. Thank you. And so this is uh, Jay Simmons along with uh, Coach Spencer Bland uh, for Flag. Mm-hmm. Media. We'll talk to you soon.